Last time we were here, as over a million of you remember, Barry did a really cool video showing how to anodize a titanium part and actually change the color in front of you. Now I'm not going to be able to do any color changes here, but I wanted to go over one of the most important post processes for a stainless steel part in the aerospace industry, and that's passivation. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. I've got distilled water. And then our cleaning solution, I'm going to be using Clear Clean 4000. I want about three to six parts of the cleaning solution for every 100 parts of water. Now I've got our water heater here. Make sure this thing is completely submerged. I've got our thermometer. And then I'm going to plug in this cheap Amazon heater, hoping it doesn't catch on fire. So it looks like everything's working. I want to get this heated up to about 120 degrees, a little bit more than that. It'll take about 10 minutes. While we're waiting, I'll tell you a little bit about our process. So what I got here is a really cheap setup that I got from Amazon. Got two plastic tubs, a drop-in induction heater, a couple of batches of distilled water. All of that probably ran me about 20 bucks. The only other thing was the cleaning solution, the Clear Clean 4000, and the passivation acid, the Citrus Surf 2050. I actually reached out to these folks at Stellar Solutions and I asked them if they could supply us with a little bit of passivation acid and the cleaning solution and they were more than happy to give us a couple of samples. In the past, we actually used the Citrus Surf 2050 because we made our own passivation tanks in-house. I'll get into that in a little bit, but some of you probably remember our video that we did in the past about those tanks catching on fire. It looks like our cleaning solution's reaching temperature. I'm almost at 150 right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. But the first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna soak our stainless steel parts. So I've got these 17-4 stainless steel parts. Donnie actually made them on the Swiss, so make sure you check out that video if you haven't seen it. They're a little bit dirty too, so I'm gonna clean them off for Donnie. So I'm actually gonna remove the thermometer. It seems like we're sticking to about 145, which is perfect. I think for the cleaning solution, they recommend it to be 120 to 160. And then we're gonna start off by soaking the parts. I'm just gonna drop them into the tub very carefully. So while we're waiting for the parts to soak, I'll talk a little bit about our passivation tanks. Back when we were a job shop, we had jobs lined up on all our machines. We were just slammed with work. But one of the things that was really hurting us was we had stainless steel parts that had to get passivated for our aerospace customers. And the passivation house that we'd send them to, they're slammed with work too. They wouldn't get us our parts till the end of the week. And we actually looked into how to bring that process into our shop so we wouldn't have to wait any longer and it would give us added value to our aerospace customers saying, hey, we can machine the parts and passivate them at the same time. We designed a big old tank up. It had a wood frame with plastic tubs, kind of similar to this setup, except much bigger. Now, typically passivation is done with nitric acid. The same kind of nitric acid you've probably seen in movies and old cartoons will burn your skin off if you come into contact with it. It would seem like at first that wouldn't realistically be something we could have in our shop. But then we also found out there was another alternative to the nitric acid and it was citric acid. This stuff here, Citrus Surf 2050, this is the same stuff we used and it's actually citric acid, the same stuff you'd find in oranges. So this citric acid is actually an alternative you can use to meet the ASM 2700 and the, uh, let me let me check real quick, the uh, ASTM A967 spec. I had to read it off the paper because I couldn't remember that offhand, but those are the actual specs you need to meet for aerospace work for passivation. So I remember seeing those specs all the time at the corner of the prints for the aerospace company that I can't mention on camera that you probably know. It has an X in the name. So these parts have been soaking for at least 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna actually take them over to the sink real quick, get them rinsed off, and we'll continue on to our next step where we're gonna soak them in acid. It's exciting. I just want to say real quick, these inserts are $6 a piece. That's right. Canamato is basically giving them away because they want to get them into your hands because once you use them, you're going to know these are the best inserts on the planet. They're going to increase your productivity, your efficiency, and all of it. $6 a piece on our store. And if you haven't gone on our store, make sure you check out the prices. Look at the different inserts. On average, we're about 40% less expensive than all other distributors. So check it out. Boom. So now I'm ready to set up the acid bath for them. So this time for the Citrus Surf 2050, they say to mix it with one part Citrus Surf to about five to 10 parts water. 
Then our Citrus Surf 2050. Then I got our water heater, a little stir with it just to kind of mix it up. Set our thermometer. Once again, we're looking for about 120 to 160 for the temperature. So that's gonna take about 10 minutes or so. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about what passivation is. And what it is, is the process of soaking stainless steel parts in acid and removing any impurities on it to bring back the natural layer of corrosion resistance that stainless steel has. So you might be wondering why to passivate, because stainless steel- Hey, there's my coat. Oh, hey. I was looking for this. It's, it's too hot Trust in that. Trust the science, nerds. It's too hot in that thing anyway. Anyway, like I was saying, so you might be wondering, why do you have to passivate stainless parts? Stainless is corrosion resistant, but certain things like just from having a tool come in contact with the stainless steel or even just shop dirt getting on top of the parts, things can break down that corrosion resistance. So what passivation does is you bathe those parts in acid. What it does is it removes all those imperfections around the stainless steel and it rebuilds that natural corrosion resistance that it had before it got machined. So I'm gonna remove the uh, heater that we have in here. So the first time when I was cleaning the parts, I didn't completely think things over when I was putting the parts in and the water is actually kind of hot. Ooh, it's actually kind of hot. <laughs> so I got some uh, tongs here. Again, I'm not really worried about touching the uh, citric acid because I mean, you probably shouldn't, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Just like that. I'm gonna let it sit in there for about 20 minutes. They say to let it go 10 to 20 minutes. I'm just gonna let it go the full 20 minutes because I don't have anything in here agitating the water because I just have a simple setup here. The nice thing about citric acid is it's a lot more forgiving than the nitric acid. So you're allowed to let it sit a little bit longer if you need to. So I mentioned before, this is a simple setup. I just have a plastic tank. I got the acid, I had the heater. When I was pitching the video for this, I wanted to get like a big ultrasonic tank to make it more professional, kind of closer to what we were using. But we wanted to keep it simple to show how easy it is to do. But what I'm here to show you is that passivation really isn't as hard as you might think it is. And if you do it, if you bring passivation to your own shop, if it makes sense to do so, you're gonna be adding a lot of value to your machine shop because that's now you have parts that you don't have to wait for lead times on. When you're quoting jobs, that's something that might be appealing to whoever you're quoting, that you can do your passivation in-house along with machining the parts. Now, going back to the fire that happened with our passivation tank, that was because we had our tank tanks made out of plastic and the heating got left on all night throughout the weekend and nobody double checked it to make sure that it went off. We had an automatic shutdown on the heater, but we also had a process where somebody was supposed to double check that that shutoff was going to go off or make sure it's not being used that the tanks are off. And that didn't happen and we left for the weekend and the tank caught on fire. But in hindsight, if we were to remake that tank, we'd probably go with a stainless steel tub instead to make sure that even if the heating element went off and all the water evaporated, that it still wouldn't cause any damage. And we'd probably look into whatever our automatic shutoff was and get a more secure version of that. So while I'm waiting for these parts to passivate, I'd like to do a special shout out to CNC Dojo. Thank you for supporting our channel and making videos like this possible. And if any of you are interested in supporting us, supporting what we do, make sure you check out the membership below and hit the join button. You get access to all sorts of different perks. You get to join our Discord channel, you get to chat with me, and you get exclusive behind the scenes content, so you're not gonna wanna miss it. So let's get these parts out of here. So I got our parts out of the passivation acid. They look really good. There's not too much of a difference visually. I know from like the anodized video, you got to see the parts completely change color. That's not gonna happen here, but the parts look clean. All that really needs to happen to these is we rinse them off one last time with some water and then we'll let them dry. And that's really all there is to passivation. I would like to once again, shout out these guys, Stellar Solutions for sending me in the Citrus Surf and the Clear Clean. This isn't a product they were trying to advertise or anything. 
I actually reached out to them because these were the things we used to use when we wanted to pass of eight parts and I wanted to do a video on it. So thank you very much Stellar Solutions for sending us the samples. Make sure you guys check out their website and they were also more than happy to answer any questions I had with making this video. So thank you very much. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I was able to teach you about passivation if you didn't already know it already. And if you do have a passivation setup in your machine shop, why don't you let us know in the comments below. If you like what we're doing, check out our channel, hit the like and subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. I heard Jesse might be doing a video on electroplating. You're not gonna wanna miss that. That's a very cool process. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. I just can't ever get something in one shot. Ah, yes. He's so, uh, what do you call it? Docile. Like not only do I come and take his coat, but he helps me get it off of him. <laughs> Ready? Passivation! Pass over. Ben, I can't do this. I cannot. Uh, I, I, won't tell you. I can't work like this.